who's eating whom in Lake Michigan? It's not an easy question, especially since a few invasive species have dramatically altered the food web. Zebra mussels, quagga mussels, round gobies, none of them were here 20 years ago, and they've changed everything. That includes the food available to our favorite sport fish, like steelhead and coho salmon and rainbow trout. The Sea Grant programs around the lake are trying to sort this out. Funding from Sea Grant and other agencies is supporting scientists like Dr. Harvey Bootsma of the School for Freshwater Sciences at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And so we're trying to figure out how the nearshore food structure and the food web structure of the whole lake has changed as a result of these invasive species that have come into the nearshore. In particular, they're assessing whether round gobies and quagga mussels might be dead ends in the food chain, or whether the changed conditions nearshore might deplete the food available for offshore species such as trout and salmon. Bootsma and his crew will sample for invertebrates on the bottom, like mussels, crayfish, and coronamids. They'll measure dissolved oxygen, pH, and other properties of the water. They'll also take water samples back to the lab. They use nets to gather zooplankton, the tiny animals living in the water. In the lab, they'll find out what species there are, how many there are, and what they eat. Today they're sampling a rocky site near Milwaukee. On other days, they'll sample a sandy site. The bottom type has a big influence on the kinds of organisms that live there. They're all this, Quagga clodophora. Dr. John Jansen, also of UW-Milwaukee's School of Freshwater Sciences, is the other Wisconsin researcher on the project. He and his crew are gathering fish samples. They'll take various measurements from them, such as lipids, fatty acids, and stable isotopes of carbon and nitrogen. These, along with analyzing the stomach contents, tell Bootsma and Jansen what the fish have been eating in the past days and weeks. The work is fairly tedious and a bit messy. All the fish will be taken back to the lab for analysis. They'll check nets at four sites today. They get mostly perch, alewives, and a few round gobies. Now it's eating my thumb! <laughs> what we'd hope for is to get a sucker or two, which is something we don't know much of, about. Okay, watch your balance. Back in the lab, the sorting, counting, and measuring starts. One job is to separate the mussels and the Clodophora algae. Aaron Wilcox is a research specialist in Bootsma's lab. This filter will be used for chlorophyll analysis, um, so giving us a general abundance of algae in the water sample. So these samples are for carbon and nitrogen isotope analysis. Um, and each individual organism kind of has their own signature based on either what they eat um, or the nutrients that they acquire and assimilate into their tissue. And so we can actually kind of trace up the food chain then based on their isotopes, um, who's eating who in the food web and where the nutrients are kind of going, what nutrients they're um, retaining as well in their uh, body tissue. It's known that mussels feed primarily on plankton, but Jansen and Bootsma want to determine whether some of that energy passes through the mussels and gets to other organisms. Mike Van Sistine is an undergraduate working in Bootsma's lab. Among his tasks, measuring the soluble reactive phosphorus in the water. Undergraduate Lisa Deguer analyzes the gut contents of the fish they gathered. Gut content analysis is a pretty traditional um, technique for looking at the diet of an animal. Uh, but it, it's really kind of hard to do because the stomach is pretty fragile and you don't want to rip it. 
And yep, I was right. <laughs> this is a quag muscle. But it's been it's a very old technique. I mean, they've used it for years cuz I mean, it's a pretty basic concept just what does something eat? Let's open up and take a look inside. Jansen and Bootsma will combine their findings with other Sea Grant-funded researchers in Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. They'll also analyze samples taken by other agencies around the lake. In the end, the project team hopes the widespread sampling and measurements will help them piece together a reasonable picture of what's happening near shore these days. Right. How many of each really species is present, right. how the available energy cycles through the system, and who's eating whom. Ultimately, understanding the nearshore ecosystems in Lake Michigan will help us better manage the lake's top predators, the salmon and trout that support the lake's multi-billion dollar sport fishing industry.